on 105, 110, because now she's looking at me with her mean face, and we're going to be late for work. And if you know anything about my wife's mean face, you don't want to see her mean face. So we're riding in the car, and I see, I'm going south. I see a state trooper going north. I, I'm getting it. I mean, really getting it. And somebody told me the lie that police officers can't clock you if they're still moving. So I, I believe that lie. I believe that lie. So, so he come, not only does he clock me, but he made a U-turn in the media and came around. If I was going 105, he was going 115 because I feel like he caught me like that. I knew I was going to jail. I knew I was going to jail. As soon as he pulled me over, I started taking my money and my license and all my belongings <laughs> out of my pockets. Because it was just almost like God had ministered to me right before you going to jail today. <laughs> I started taking everything out of my pockets and I gave it to Jasmine. She's in there like, what are you giving this to me for? She didn't know what I knew. God hadn't talked to her like he had talked to me. So I'm sitting there, she's looking confused. I'm saying, God told me to give this to you. Take it, take it. So I'm sitting there and now, this is how foolish I was. He came to the window and said, driver's license, registration. I knew I didn't have a driver's license. So I gave him my state ID. It's a card, it has a picture on it, same thing. Here you go, that's me. He said, this is your license that I need. I tell him, I tell him that my, I forgot my license at home, I grabbed the wrong card. He goes back to the car, of course, runs it. He doesn't even come back to the door. He stands at the rear of the car with black gloves on, has put on his sunglasses, and he knows I'm looking at him because he just stands and goes like this. I get out of the car. I get out of the car. Needless to say, I go to jail. I'm in jail for three days. I said that was my Jonah in the belly of the well experience. Three days. I had to take a shower, put on an orange jumpsuit the whole night. This is the thing I want to get to you though. Because of my disobedience, I ended up in a place that I never wanted to be. On the third day, I'm now handcuffed and shackled walking into a courtroom and who's sitting on the front row? My mama. I never wanted my mother to see me in an orange jumpsuit, handcuffed and shackled. And you know what? God's grace and mercy watched over me all those days. But when he got to the point to where he says you can't go any further, he worked it out to where everybody I tried to call from jail their phone was set up to where they wouldn't receive collect calls. And I'm trying to figure out, when did everybody set that phone up not to accept collect calls? I want to come home. But God wanted me to understand, because of your disobedience, you now have to suffer the consequences of your actions. But I need you to understand that although I went with all those tickets, and although I had to go through that shameful, embarrassing experience, and although my mama saw me, she still looked at me with love. And you know what she did? She went right to the bells bondsman and gave him some money. And about an hour and a half later, I was walking out like I was the man. Because just like Jesus, my mama saw the best in me. And when everybody else wanted to throw me away, when everybody else wants to throw you away, God sees the best in you. And he says, you're going to have to suffer the consequences. But I need you to understand, when you come to yourself, I'll be there standing with welcome on wedding arms, waiting to put a robe on you and a ring on your head. I need you to understand, because he loves you. He'll be there waiting for you. But you must understand that there's a danger in disobedience. God bless you. danger in being disobedience. Amen. 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 Let us stand all over this place.